What about those people who, who you know, refuse that love of God? I mean, they are out there. If you haven't I have seen not, them, I have. I haven't met a person who refuses the love of God. I have met a person who refuses Christians who give a gospel of turn or burn. But I'm telling you, if you experience the love of God, your heart is born Jesus? to receive it. You can't reject it. I mean, I mean, I Jerry, mean, people, yeah, people saw Jesus in the flesh, the most perfect ex expression of, of love you can have, and people still rejected it. Jerry, there are Bible translations that you should look up that do not have the concept of hell of everlasting punishment from cover to cover. But you, and, you should, and you should avail yourself to them, and you should do some Greek studies I'm of and Hebrew aware, studies I am and of find course out aware which of ones all are that, true. Gary. Give, give, Jerry, a, give Jerry the last word. Jerry, go ahead. I am, of course, aware of all of that. Uh, there, there are biblical translations like that, but the question is not whether or not the word appears there. The question is whether the concept appears there, and you cannot simply translate the Greek and Hebrew fairly without doing serious justice justice to the idea that there is a real uh, possibility of, of eternal loss, eternal misery, eternal punishment. Well, so the word hell is not an issue. The question is, does the Bible in the Greek language threaten the possibility of eternal misery, a lake of fire which never goes out? These are images, metaphors. The answer is yes, it clearly does. And of course those translations are there, but uh, you simply can't do justice to the Greek without acknowledging well, that. Well, Jerry, I, th I mean, I come down on your side personally. I mean, I study this myself. I was an atheist, and uh, if you had told me as an atheist that, it, that God exists and he is only love and Adolf Hitler's in heaven, I don't know what I would have done with that. I think it's more logical that God is love, but he's also just, he's also righteous. There's other dimensions to God than, than just his love, and that has to be taken into account. And I think you're right, Jerry. I think the, the Bible does, as I've studied it, uh, teach the doctrine of hell. And the question is, is it logical? Does it make sense? And I think, Jerry, as you've explained, in light of what we know about God and the full dimension of who he is, I think there is a case that can be made for the reality of hell. Now, I know, Gary, you disagree with me on that. We appreciate your input on this topic, and uh, you've really added new meaning to the phrase, faith under fire. And uh, we're gonna be right back, so come back uh, with us in just a few moments, will you? Coming up, is eating meat a sin? You know, Christianity, as far as I understand, is about people. We are omnivores, we are not herbivores. And later, Hugh Hefner on Jesus. Do I think that he uh, was the son of God? Um, I don't think that he's any more of a son of God than we are. I want to thank Rocket Ship Productions, uh, the program Faith Under Fire, all the producers, Lee Strobel for allowing me to be on their program Faith Under Fire, this segment uh, Hell, Fact or Fiction. Uh, there was a time when a person like myself would not only not be able to express my views, but I'd be under faggots right now. My tent maker site would be banned. Uh, everything that I wrote would be collected and put under me, and we'd all fry. We'd all die. So I thank you. I thank you know God that I live in a time that that I'm free to express myself. But the Faith Under Fire program, it was only 15 minutes long. I got to speak about three minutes. I was cut off in the times that I did uh, express myself. And there were several questions that they were supposed to ask me that I never got to speak on. And I was supposed to have the last word, and I didn't get the last word. So I live in a wonderful modern age in which little nobodies can actually get the last word and I'm going to take the opportunity to, to, to do so right now. We live in a glorious age where little nobodies can have great impacts on society. And I encourage, encourage all of you young nobodies out there who have a computer, who have a little camera, who have a little recording gadget. You can touch the world today. There was a time when people like you would not have been able to go into the avenues of education and influence and political religious arena. You would have been censored or you would have been killed. But today is a new day and we actually get to express ourselves in ways that are unimaginable. I'm going to express myself right now and take advantage of the wonderful opportunity and time that we live in. Uh, I'll start first with, uh, with the subject of, of Hitler. Uh, I was asked whether Hitler was in heaven and I immediately said that he was. I'd like to kind of clarify that a little bit. 
Uh, Hitler is in heaven if you are seated in heavenly places and if you have the eyes of faith to see that when Jesus said it is finished, he, it literally is finished. In faith, uh, the, the seed was set in motion and as sure as Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all mankind unto myself. You can bank on that. All mankind will be drawn unto Jesus Christ. Is Hitler in heaven now? Probably not. He's probably in Sheol awaiting a resurrection. And what happens in that period, uh, in this short segment, I don't want to get into. But, uh, but many people are, are shocked when I say that, that Hitler is, is going to eventually be restored back to God. I'm, I'm surprised that uh, Dr. Wallace was shocked because he believes himself that people can be saved after the grave. And he himself has acknowledged that Hitler can repent on the other side of the grave. Now, think about it. A man like Hitler, who did the terrible evil things on this earth and is now in, uh, in, in not a very nice place, perhaps, if Jesus gave him the opportunity, do you want to be eternally separated from me uh, and live in, in godlessness, in, in goodlessness, and so on and so forth, or do you want to be with me? Uh, what do you think Hitler's going to choose? So I think Dr. Walls was really on my side, so to speak, when it comes to the fact that there is hope for Hitler. And as far as I'm concerned, not only is there hope, I believe the scriptures make it abundantly clear that, Jesus, that Hitler is going to be uh, where the rest of us uh, are going to be in the arms of Jesus Christ. Um, what I should have said if I had... Uh, had, had it to do over again, I would have responded to uh, that question. Uh, if you tell me where the six million Jews that Hitler killed are and where people like Gandhi are, I'll tell you where Hitler is. Because according to the traditional view, those six million Jews who rejected Christ and Gandhi, who was not a Christian when he died, according to the traditional view, they are right now either in eternal separation from God from uh, eternally separated from goodness um, or they're in a literal lake of fire with literal bodies being tormented day and night forever and ever in the lake of fire. That's, those are the two traditional models that are going right now and neither one of them really stand very strongly for the justice and the holiness and the righteousness and the mercy of a God who came to this earth and died for his enemies. So I wanted to clear the, the Hitler uh, issue away first. Hitler uh, will be restored as every sinner. Hitler was a sinner, no doubt about it. But show me one person on this earth who wasn't a sinner. Show me one person on this earth who got to heaven apart from grace. We all need grace, every single one of us, in order to attain eternal life. Another point that Dr. Jerry Walls made is that, that hell, the traditional uh, model of hell, has always been a teaching from the beginning of Christ to today. It's been a teaching of the church. That's simply not true. Uh, the early church did not teach the kind of concept of hell that the church taught in the Dark Ages, nor in the Reformation, nor in modern contemporary evangelicalism. This teaching of hell that we have today, where did it come from? It originated from senators, Roman senators and Greek senators and Egyptian uh, princes and kings who used the, the concept of everlasting punishment on the other side of the grave to hold people in check. They used it as a means of power to hold people in fear and to keep them in ignorance. And on the Tentmaker website and on the whatthehelldoeshell.com website, you'll see the, the uh, the, the uh, URLs for that on the screen there. If you go to those sources, you'll d discover several quotes from the early ancient philosophers and poets, and they will tell you who invented the concept of hell. Powerful men you hold, using the concept of fear to hold people in, uh, in check, they are the ones who invented the concept of hell. The early Jews, the Jews of the Bible, they never taught it. You'll never find hell in the Old Testament in any new translations today. 
And the early church fathers didn't teach it, and neither did Jesus or his apostles. Now, I'm going to quote from some church, Orthodox church historians, and out of their own 